Uh, good evening, residents of Dearborn Heights. <laughs> um, according to the rules and regulation of how we have to do our second hearing, our second public hearing, uh, I'm going to start this meeting, uh, this uh, public hearing, by having Chris Klumchak, who is the grant coordinator, give us a little bit of background about this particular, uh, our particular budget, and then I'll go through the line items myself afterwards. <clears throat> Please, if you have any questions, just jog them down. We'll be more than happy to answer any questions from the council, from the residents, and we'll go from there. Chris. Thank you, Jill. Good evening, everyone. Uh, some brief uh, introduction here. Everyone knows we're here for the Community Development Black Grant Program. This is the second public hearing of the requested two public hearings that we have to have every grant season. Uh, so we're getting near the end of the process and moving towards adoption. So it's good that we're here today to propose our budget and uh, take any questions and comments like Joe said at the, at the end of our comment period. So uh, the, the uh, funds that we propose have to um, fall under national objectives of the Black Grant Program. They have to benefit low and moderate income persons, uh, and they have to be activities which aid in preventing or el eliminating slums or blight, and activities meeting community development needs that have a particular urgency. Uh, most of our projects fall under the low and moderate income area, um, and not very common with the slum and blight designation that's under the block grant. Uh, we've only done maybe one or two projects over the years under that heading. So uh, the ac annual action plan, this is for the 2019-2020 program year that's coming up that will start on July 1 and go to June 30th of 2020. Uh, Dearborn Heights anticipates an estimated total allocation of $1,018,034. That's based on our last year's funding. Uh, HUD has not released that allocation yet. Um, we're hoping to get that as soon as possible. It's been coming in maybe April, May area. So once we get that, we'll be able to finalize uh, the particulars of the budget. Uh, the program income for this upcoming year, we estimate that in the amount of 100,000. Uh, that's an average, that program income comes mainly from our revolving fund, which is the uh, residential rehab loan payoffs that we get during the program year. The city also anticipates $38,287 of prior year's resources to be expended. Those would be reprogram funds that were unspent or from uh, other projects from prior years. Uh, the CDBG funds are proposed to be used for the following activities, and that's what we'll bring uh, Director Joe Hashem back up and he'll go through the line item proposed budget for us tonight. <coughs> Thank you. Joe? Thank you, Chris. Uh, we have passed on the uh, executive summary. We have copies here on the table for members of the public. If you'd like to help yourself, you can follow, or, uh, follow along with me. Um, every line item, we have 11 line items on this particular budget. Every line item has been vetted out. Uh, it's eligible for under the HUD CDBG program, and I'll just go through them. Um, basically, what we are proposing at this point, uh, Chris mentioned the money, the $1,168,000. So we're going to break that down into our line items. Uh, the first line item we have is code enforcement, and we are proposing $100,000. Code enforcement basically covers the ordinance department and along with the building department. And that money can only be used in the low to moderate income areas. Um, Jack has done a great job in keeping track of every hour and how this, who spends time in that particular area. So we do not cover anything else, just the low mod income area. Um, the next line item, um, which is crime prevention, and we are proposing $50,000. This goes to the police station that, um, that they use in the low to moderate income area as well. 
which if you remember we have the map with the blue sections on it so whenever they do a report there or they go on a call and they do some work in that particular area they keep track of those hours they bill us for it and we can reimburse them uh, for uh, we reimburse the police department for their work in the low moderate low to moderate income areas the third line item I'm talking about I'm going to talk about is the Eaton Senior Center improvements I believe that's something that came up quite a few times in this, at the City Council and we took that into uh, consideration. We thank everybody who was involved with this. I mentioned the Mayor, uh, Councilman Lisa, and everybody else. Um, in this number, we have allocated $91,000. Uh, this number did come from the, bill, the uh, Parks and Recreation Department. They did give us a proposal of what, uh, uh, what needs to be done and how much they estimate the cost to be. And I think the $91,000 by talking to Mike and Kim and whoever's involved along with the mayor, obviously, we think that's an appropriate number for the eating center to fix the bathrooms, the facade on the front, on the front of the building, along with the concrete works that needs to be done. Um, the next one is the Fair Housing Center of Metro Detroit. This is an ongoing project that we, do, we have done of I guess for a long time and we are allocating six thousand dollars and again this falls under the uh, national objective it's an ongoing um, uh, ongoing project uh, six thousand dollars the next one underneath that is the demolition program this is what you might know as the good neighbor program we did change the name to just to make it easier and to remove any doubt as far as the name uh, associated with this we are hoping to use this particular funds which we have allocated uh, $50,000 for $50,000 we are hoping to use that fund to demolish the blighted houses in Dearborn Heights um, the spot blight or any demolition that the city um, requires of us and that would alleviate a little bit of pressure off your personal budgets for the departments. Uh, the line underneath that is, uh, I know I covered the demolition program, the housing rehab. This is the what we usually do on a daily basis is rehab the houses and for the citizens of Dearborn Heights. This is an income driven program. Uh, everybody's welcome to apply for it. We have very uh, stringent rules that we have to follow, but we have helped a lot of people in the city of Dearborn Heights that don't have the ability to um, change their heat, fix their roof, do their driveway, and what have you. I know I receive a lot of calls from the Hornets Department. Thank you, Jack, for calling me. Was it today or yesterday? Just yesterday, and he sent us somebody that needed urgent help, and that's what we're here for. So this is really what we do every single day with the citizens of Dearborn Heights. Uh, for this particular program, we have allocated $242,000. The reason we didn't do as much as we usually do is we have some leftover from previous years, so we have enough money to keep the program going for this particular year. So we did take money from this and put it into the eating center, just to let you know. Uh, the next one is LHAC, which is, I have to read this somehow, Leaders Advancing and Helping Communities. Uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, agency, they do a lot of work in the South Dearborn Heights, I think mostly at Robichaud High School. Um, they have applied repeatedly last year and this year. I have, they have submitted all the proper documents. We have vetted this project. They do a lot of work with drugs, uh, with uh, students, and they are eligible for this money. Um, this will be our first year. This is a new program that we're starting. We allocated $3,500 for. Uh, next line item with the, is the Senior Citizen Services, and this is, falls under limited clientele, and this helps the Berwyn and the Eaton Center stay open um, and help with their administrative costs and a lot of their bills and what have you. Uh, we allocated $109,000. Um, and they also, they have their own money for that. But our contribution to the senior citizens is $109,000 at this point. The next line item is the Vista Maria, and this is an, also an ongoing 
um, project that we do every year mostly. Uh, we have allocated $30,000. This falls under the limited clientele uh, basis, um, uh, limited clientele national objective, I want to say. Uh, it does help a lot of girls, a lot of, this is a great organization. I know I mentioned it before, we have visited that organization, and I have extended an invitation to everybody, to city council and the administration if they want to visit and see what type of work and how they help the girls, all from age eight to age 18, I believe. They have, um, uh, schooling, they have drug rehab, they have uh, shelter for them, they have all kind of things for them. So it's a plus it falls in the city of Dearborn Heights, so we are helping our own uh, community at this level. Uh, next line item, which is a limited uh, low to mud uh, income area, is a water main uh, replacement. And I believe you have a better description of where that water main is. It's in the executive summary. It's on Virgil Avenue this year. Yeah, I don't have it on my sheet. If you want to pass one to the mayor, though, please, if you don't mind. Uh, the water main is basically uh, we uh, leverage the uh, DPW by helping them do replace the old water mains in the city of Dearborn Heights. However, these water mains have to be picked in a low to moderate income area. And uh, uh, the um, DPW works with us on this one because they have to follow certain federal rules as far as the Davis-Bacon, as far as uh, the way they bid the job and what have you. And they have done an extremely good job as far as cooperating with us. And uh, we have done this for a very long time and hoping to be doing it in the future as well. Uh, the last number is the general administration and slash planning. This is a cap number that we basically take 20% of the actual uh, the grant, and that is used for administration purposes. Um, the administration covers everything from salaries to uh, consultants to attorneys to uh, uh, utilities and what have you. So. All of those numbers, if you add them all up, they come up to about $1,156,000 and some change. That dollar amount might change a little bit as Chris suggested when we do receive the actual numbers. These are estimated numbers. Usually they don't change a whole lot, but we're pretty much in the ballpark on this one. So we can tweak them a little bit. We will eventually come back to the city council. We'll give you a heads up way in advance. We'll give you the proper documentation to adopt the budget, uh, hopefully in May, so we can be on top of this. We don't want to be behind. We want to be in front of this and do it really on time. Um, eventually, uh, we will submit it to HUD. Again, all of these have been vetted out. All of these are eligible. Uh, a lot of them are ongoing project. We have a couple of new ones that I mentioned. The 18th Center is a new one. LHAC is a new one. The rest of them are regular land items that we use every year. Uh, at this point, um, this will be published in the papers, I will leave maybe tomorrow, the day after. Um, next, week. next week. And then it'll be published for, by, by, by law, we have to put it up for 30 days. Uh, it will also be on our website, our own website. It'll be at both libraries, John F. Kennedy Jr. and the Caroline Library in the South. It will be on the city website. It has details of how to make any comments. It has phone numbers, it has emails, <coughs> and obviously you all have my phone number if you wanna call me and talk to me about any of these line items. At this point, I think we're pretty much all done. I will open the floor for any questions from the public or from the council. Madam Chair. Chair. Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. Thank you. Um, I was gonna ask about the survey and that's what you're gonna publish next week. That's where residents can make comments after they read that. We wanna encourage them to read um, what you have here. I also wanna say thank you for including the Eaton Seniors. Of that's course. really loud. Um, sorry about that. That's I feel like right. I'm shouting. Um, the Eaton Senior Center improvements, because uh, if we recall, there was a resolution to move that forward yes. to get those done, and I really appreciate you following through on it. Absolutely. So thank you, and thank you for publishing, as you know, is required. But again, we want to encourage our residents to go and make those comments and review, because we need their input, correct? So, woman, we go through this every year. I encourage everyone. 
We, I wish this place was full of people. I really do. And uh, thank, thank you, you, Chair, because we like to piggyback off the city council because then we have a better <coughs> turnout. Uh, thank so you. thank you for that. Councilman Muskin? Um, first of all, thank you, uh, Mr. Director Hashem. Uh, I'm glad you changed that name of the demolition program to get rid of any any doubts of, uh, of anything. But I, I, the question I have, do you think that the 50,000 is going to be enough uh, for demolition since most of the houses that we do demo are in low and moderate areas? And I would just like to see it, there be enough money there to demo anything that we've got coming <clears throat> up. Uh, do you foresee us going through that whole amount? Yes. Well. <laughs> The city council backs us up and allows us to do it, yes, obviously. The, uh, when I drove through the south of Dearborn Heights and some other areas and looked at some of the houses that Jack had given me, there is a lot of houses that need to be demolished, obviously. When I say a lot, I want to say between 25 to 32. Uh, a lot of these are budgeted into their department. We are leveraging the department. So we're not doing all the demolition. We're just going to basically do some of them. I, I'm just saying if they are in a low and moderate area, it would be nice to use federal money to do it. Uh, yeah, Council. And, and I appreciate your effort in getting that done. I really sure. do. Sure. So uh, and I don't know where else we would take the money from. I'm just. That's the other thing I was going to yeah. mention is we have $1.4 million proposals. Really, that's how much we receive that people want to spend it on. And, but we only have to work with $1,100,000 and 56,000. So somehow we have to make sure that that money is used. That's I have talked to Jack about this <coughs> as far as the leverage in his department with the $50,000. I think we can do a good job with that. If we see the need for more money, we can always next year maybe add some more. Keep in mind, we will not be doing the Eaton Center next year. So that $91,000 can switch back to maybe demolition or some other line items. Councilman Constant. Thank you, and uh, Director Hashim, good job with Vista Maria, with the Eaton Center, with all these projects. And we're competing basically with other cities for this money, correct? Yes, there's only a certain amount of money that federal, and I'm not going to quote the numbers, I believe it's $4.5 billion for the United States of America. So, you know, having this completed on time, having it done properly, and making sure that all these projects are viable and fall under the national objective will help us get it done. We have not missed our uh, CDBG, a block grant, uh, from what Chris tells me and from what I looked at in the last 40 years, and I'm hoping we will not miss it this year. There was only one year. That, one year, which was... And that was... Uh, by them, the federal government. all had to do, because some people were upset that uh, it would invite uh, people of color in the community. It's many years ago. That was a long time ago, in the Very, 80s. very long ago. But we lost over a million dollars, yes. and that was ridiculous. But yeah, again, good. we try to do our, the best we can do. Um, we open to comments. I wish we get a lot more comments from the public as well. All the numbers, the email. Well, what what happens though if we get bogged down in some detail or something that it it doesn't get approved? This is usually a pretty. There's a deadline. Process. If we don't meet our deadline, then two things happen. If we don't meet a certain deadline, literally, that's it. We're done. We have to reapply next year. This year will be a zero budget, zero. <clears throat> Um, we are not going that route. We are going to hopefully uh, get this adopted. Uh, there's some paperwork that the mayor, the administration have to sign. He is the, uh, um, what is the title for that, Chris, as far as the mayor? He is the, certifying officer. Certifying. you're the certified officer. He signs those documents. We send them back to HUD, and then they let us know uh, what our, when the money will be available. Um, the other route is, if we are we don't do things on time, then um, and we don't miss the deadline, but we're very close, then we get pushed a little bit behind. So instead of knowing how much money, what is it, the well, funds? It delays the, it funds, delays release. the funds release. Yeah. So instead of getting our funds in September, October, we might get it much later than that, by two months or so. And keep in mind, we do have to spend, there's certain requirement, uh, we have to spend certain ratios of the block grant every year. If we do not do this, then we get a slap on the hand and we might have to give some of this money back eventually. 
So we do have to spend the money, and the more we wait for us to get our funds, the harder it is to spend $1.2 million. Okay, Councilman Abdella. Um, Director, I had a question for you. Um, one of the conversations that I had with you um, was in regards to percentages. Do, do you mind just letting me know what those percentages are and what they're based on? In other words, it, it, certain parts of this particular budget have to go, certain percentages Caps. have to go to certain things. I'm Caps. Sorry? Caps, you mean? Caps or percentages? Percentages. You mentioned, because uh, one of the programs in there, you mentioned there's only so much percentage not, that can be given towards service. Yeah, that's, we have two different type of um, this. Well, first of all, the administration. That cannot exceed 20%, period. Okay. So no matter how much money we spend, we cannot go above 20%, and that's pretty much across the United States. It's not about Dearborn Heights. The other one is the services. Services cannot exceed 15%. Of the block, fifteen percent of the block grant. One five. So if you look at the block grant of one million one hundred thousand and some change, fifteen percent of that can be used for services, which is in this particular case, is the. Um, uh, I'm, I'm looking at. Um, Oh, it's yeah, yours is more detailed. Mine is I've just got the numbers. Um, the fifteen percent will cover the senior services and uh, the crime prevention, crime imagine. prevention, mm -hmm. and LAHC in this point. So it's and the fair housing. It's, those are the services. So we can only use fifteen percent of our total grant for that. Mm -hmm. The rest of them are don't have any caps on them. So when we say we're giving $250,000 to DPW for the water main, that is not capped. It could be 275. However, we are constricted with the dollar amount that we're working with. So again, the caps does have a big, um, um, it does affect how much we can do with that 15% of the block grant itself. Mm -hmm. Just a little side note, I think there's a typo in there, so I don't know, <coughs> LAHC, yeah. it's okay. switched wrong. One of the two switched wrong, either the name or the acronym. Uh, it's the acronym is by LAHC. Incorrect. It's LAHC. Yeah. It's a misprint. Mm -hmm. LAHC would yeah. be yeah. Yeah. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, fix that. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, thank you. It says LHAC, so it's okay. yeah, close enough. Yeah, we we got the we idea. Got <laughs> Any Councilman Wenzel. Oh, sure. Tom. Um, is allocated, uh, you're proposing 50000 for the demolition program? Yes. Um, just out of curiosity, how many houses is this for you or for the administration? What's the average cost to demo, demo a house? Oh, it, I, do you know, Jack? I, yeah, I mean, we've had some that have been over 20000 depending on what's inside of them mm -hmm. when they go in and inspect. And then we've done some for less than 10000 So. The last one that we did ourselves was about 8,900 bucks. That was the yeah, Joy Road. The last three houses that we brought to city council, it was three houses at 27,000. So with 50,000, I want to say we can do six to seven houses. But that's just us. I mean, the, the, the building and the ordinance have their own budgeted line items for demolition. We just leverage in their accounts right, at this right. point. Okay, I'm just curious about that. I know some could go fifteen thousand. Sure, yes. I mean, maybe three or four homes. Okay, all right. Thank you, Madam Chair. I got since I got uh, the right people here. Uh, Commissioner Webb called me and I sent you an email on yes. the uh, fact that um, where they do meals on wheels at Berwyn, there's a problem with the cement as they leave, and there's some difficulty. So we have a plan to get that all corrected, yes, and are I, we going to use general fund, or are we going to no, use? No, we're going to use we're going to use block grant money. Okay. We have hundred and ten thousand dollars that was earmarked for Berwyn Center from previous years, so we didn't touch that. We kept it as is. If we would have touched it, we would have we would have to reprogram it, but we did not. I did send an email uh, today. I don't know if you received it or not, Mr. Mayor. It's been a busy day. I know. That's why I'm sure you haven't received it. I did talk to Mike Blackburn. I talked to um, John from DPW, and Mike is coming by tomorrow. I really have no knowledge about the kitchen stuff. This is Mike's department. He's gonna help us out. We have $110,000 to revamp the whole kitchen. We might need some engineering help. We're gonna do the flooring, we're gonna do the grease traps, we're gonna do the sinks. 
whatever needs to be done, we're going to do it. Good. Because when I walked in there with the commissioner, Good. that place, with all due respect, is not a nice place to walk into. And I know the council chair spends a lot of time for meal, wheels and meals. Meals yeah, and wheels, it, I'm sorry. It's pretty bad. The sink doesn't drain re really well. And the sidewalk that you're speaking about, yes. we had one of our delivery people trip and fall on it. Yeah. The mayor and had a cart that they were bringing in from Wayne County with the trays of food sure. dumped mm -hmm. on I the did ground walk, it got caught. I did walk to that. Oh, yeah. And the mayor has reached out to me. And so Chris, myself, we walked through it. But again, we're not. Um, uh, we are not uh, construction people. So that's why I made an appointment to see Mike Blackburn from maintenance. He's going to help us write the RFPs, the request for proposals. Then we'll see exactly what we need. We'll come out in front of the city council. We will go out for bids. And hopefully we'll make that. That would Spanking nice. new. Good. Every year we deliver good fellows uh, Absolutely. from there and a lot of other activities. Yes. Any other questions from the public, police officers, chief? I'm sure. Council <coughs> Abdella? You know, and, and I don't know if it's too late, but I just want to put in my two cents worth. For LAHC, I've personally been involved with their program, helping at Robichaud. And I can tell you that they do a lot of very, very nice programs in that area. And that's an area that, um, unfortunately, sometimes is not looked at as much by some organizations. So. Personally, I'd like to have seen that a little bit of a better number towards them because they've done a lot of things that are very, very nice in the community to help the people that need it. So, and I don't know where the money could have been taken from. I realize the it will dilemma. come from senior services at this point, but I think that the seniors needed a little bit right. more. Right, I, I agree now, with that. Next year, we'll take an, another look at it. I mean, if we can move these numbers, keep in mind we are restricted with the caps on these. We have a 15% cap, so the total amount is $169,000 that we can work with. That inclu include the code enforcement for the police, that includes the senior centers, uh, senior services. Not code and enforcement, it's crime prevention. Did I say code enforcement? Yeah. Crime prevention, sorry. They're too close. Um, so in order for us to give LH LHAC more money, we have to take it from somewhere else. No, I, I realize that. Just yeah. So Good last work. year we gave the Lennon Center, if you remember, money. This year we didn't give the Lennon Center. We gave this organization some money. So it does go around. Next year it may be the Dad's Club, for example, if they apply or somebody else. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions or we can call this off? Looks like that's it. All right. Thank well, you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you uh, to the public and thank you, Mr. Mayor and the council.